Today, I'm talking about seven sick mind games the narcissist uses to manipulate you. And if you're on the receiving end of any of these games, chances are really good you're dealing with someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. Now, how can I be so sure? Because relatively healthy, genuinely decent, kind, and good humans don't play these games, but narcissists do. Let's dive in. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tammy M. Joyce. I'm an empowerment life coach specializing in codependency and narcissistic abuse recovery for empaths, scapegoats, and awakening light leaders. If you're new to my channel, a very special welcome. Please take a second to say hello and introduce yourself in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss a new video. So let's talk about seven sick mind games the narcissist uses to manipulate you. Mind game number one, love bombing. This is where we enter the danger zone with narcissists right out of the gate. While overt narcissists present as ever so charming and can be incredibly magnetic, covert narcissists present as sweet, demure, shy, harmless even. When in fact, nothing could be further from the truth. They are the true wolf in sheep's clothing. And if you want to understand more about the covert narcissist, you can watch this video here. But regardless, whether we're dealing with an overt or a covert narcissist, the issue is if our habit is to take people at face value and assume the best before we even know much about them, or if we're particularly susceptible to flattery and manipulation, which let's face it, some of us are, we can be led down the garden path quite easily by these master manipulators and find ourselves in a whole world of pain and drama and trauma before we even know what hit us. And this is especially true if you are an untreated adult child. In other words, you were raised in a highly dysfunctional family of origin where your needs for safety, security, love, validation, acceptance, and approval were not met in a consistent, reliable, and predictable way. And the untreated piece means you have yet to do your inner child healing and recovery work. For those of you who identify as such, being love bombed by a highly manipulative, ever so charming, empathy impaired narcissist can be like taking love heroin, especially when there's an emotional and energetic resonance to the original family of origin wounding and trauma. Meaning whether we're consciously aware of it or not, the narcissist is a vibrational match to the people who harmed us to begin with. When this dynamic is at play and we're being showered with so-called love, attention, validation, admiration, and praise, this is fully where love addiction is ignited. Not love, love addiction, big difference. And love addiction is absolutely as debilitating an addiction as any other addictive process. Your brain's biochemistry is being used against you and you don't even know it. So beware of the love bomber who comes on strong early on in the game and works overtime to charm and flatter you. Healthy people don't come on super strong right out of the gate without knowing you in any relationship dynamic, romantic, friendship, or otherwise. So do not ignore this red flag. It's a sick game and it doesn't tend to end well for the empath. Mind game number two, projection. Projection is the phenomena of a person literally assigning to you the attitudes, behaviors, and character traits that they do not like, cannot accept, or acknowledge about themselves. And the truth is, we all do this to some degree, until we become aware enough and do enough of our own shadow work that we A, do it a lot less, and B, catch ourselves when we do and consciously choose to arrest the behavior. And therein lies the problem when we're talking about narcissists and the phenomena of projection. First of all, they lack the fundamental capacity for honest self-reflection. And although you may hear them pay lip service to doing the work, they actually see no reason to do any real work on themselves. They also tend to carry a lot more in their subconscious disowned shadow than the average empathic human. So there's a lot more stuff to project subconscious as that may be. This is one way the narcissist unburdens themselves from the heavy load they carry in terms of subconscious or semi-conscious fear, insecurity, feelings of guilt, shame, inferiority, deep self-loathing, and other unresolved issues and traumas they don't have the ability to confront, re-experience, process, and heal. 
How projection works is rather than acknowledging and owning their stuff and doing their own work, they project it onto the nearest highly empathic target. And the family scapegoat knows exactly what I'm talking about because those of us who were cast as the family scapegoat have had a lifetime of this, starting in early childhood. The narcissist will accuse you of thinking, doing, and being exactly what they themselves are thinking, doing, and being. If they know deep down that they lack personal integrity and self-respect, They'll either accuse you of the same or they'll accuse you of thinking that they lack personal integrity and self-respect. Even if that's the furthest thing from your mind. They'll project that disowned part that they can't accept or acknowledge about themselves onto you. If they've slept with their brother-in-law, for example, they'll accuse you of trying to sleep with your brother-in-law. If they're a professional thief and convicted felon, they'll accuse you of stealing the family jewelry. If they're cheating on you, they'll accuse you of cheating. See how this works? If they feel intellectually inadequate, know that they themselves are a manipulative and morally weak person, they'll call you stupid and dumb and weak and a manipulator. When they're highly toxic and controlling, they'll tell anyone who will listen what a toxic control freak you are. Starting to get the picture? Here's what you need to know about projection. The more high voltage and disproportionate the attack, the more intense the name calling, the more bizarre the accusations, the more you can be sure it's a confession. The louder they yell, the louder they scream in their fit of rage, the more you can be certain that they are fully talking about themselves. Whether they consciously realize it or not, that is exactly what's going on. Mind game number three. Gaslighting. Now, gaslighting is a really sick game that involves denying your experience of reality, causing you or attempting to cause you to doubt and second guess yourself and your memory and what you know full well you saw, heard and lived. It sounds like this. That never happened. I never said that. I never did that. You're making assumptions. I'm so innocent and you're so sensitive. It wasn't that bad. Miscommunications happen and you're blowing things out of proportion. You're crazy. Now here's the thing about gaslighting. You know what you live, period, end of story. And anyone who attempts to gaslight you ever is not a safe person. And distance needs to be put between you and them, no matter who they are. Sure, miscommunication happens but not as a pattern of behavior on repeat in big and small ways. We're looking for patterns here, not a one-off. And when someone has a pattern of behavior that includes saying one thing and then denying they ever said it, or treating you shitty and then having all manner of justification and rationalization as to why your perspective and your feelings aren't legitimate, you, my friend, are being gaslit. And it's up to you to see it for what it is and protect yourself. And here's a tip. If you suspect you're dealing with a narcissist, covert or otherwise, document everything. You never know when being able to pull up screenshots of the text or the conversation in Messenger might just save your skin due to their ever so convenient and bizarre memory lapses. Now comment below and tell me whether or not you're currently on the receiving end of any of these sick games. And if so, what are you going to do about it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of working with me in my eight week transformational coaching program, the freedom class, there is a link in the description below where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. Mind game number four, triangulation and gathering the troops. Here's the thing. It's pretty sad when an adult in their forties or older has to share a half true distorted version of the story in order to get a 21 year old on their team. Sometimes worse, they do this with a child, but this is what they do. It's sick, it's sad, and it's a big clue that you're dealing with a narcissist when this is going on. How do I know? Because reasonably healthy adults can actually stand on the firm foundation of their own experience without going out of their way to rally the troops onto their team. Narcissists, however, go at this activity like it's their full-time job. Mind game number five, ghosting you with the silent treatment. It's how they passive aggressively communicate a few things. 
First of all, contempt and disdain. Unprovoked and unwarranted as it may be, they prop themselves up by looking down their nose at anyone they feel is beneath them or isn't useful to them somehow. It's also how they try to establish or maintain control in the relationship. I'll show you by ghosting you and ignoring you. I'm so powerful. <laughs> how the game is supposed to go is you're supposed to run after and chase them. Now, when this doesn't happen and their childish little game actually blows up in their face because you won't play, they move on to the next game. Mind game number six, the victim card. No matter their transgressions and relationship crimes, somehow they always manage to land on the victim side of the story. They can behave like a complete and utter asshole in the relationship, but when you won't participate, engage, or play along, suddenly they're the victim. With narcissists, it's all about domination, power, and control. The same is true even with the more passive aggressive covert narcissist. When they realize they have no power over you and cannot dominate or control you, or the situation for that matter, because you step out of the ring and refuse to participate in their childish nonsense, they move on to the next game. Mind game number seven, the smear campaign. When a toxic person can no longer control you, they will work overtime to control how others see, think, and feel about you. When in their minds, all they're left with in terms of power or control over you in the situation is manipulating the perceptions of others, poisoning the minds and hearts of others towards you, you can be sure they'll go at it like it's a full-time job. And this is precisely why our own healing and recovery work is so important. You need to get yourself to a place where you're so solid in the knowledge of who you are that you can rise above whatever smear campaign may be underway. And I fully get that this is not easy, especially when we're still deeply wounded and carrying a ton of trauma. But you can get there. And in my opinion, you must. Friends, it boils down to do your work. And you do it because you're worth it. My friends, I hope you got some value out of this today. If you liked what you heard, be sure to drop a like and a comment. Let me know what your biggest takeaway was. And if you're new to my channel, again, a very special welcome. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos throughout the week. And once again, if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of working with me in my eight week transformational coaching program, the Freedom Class, there is a link in the description below where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. And as always, I will leave you with this. Know your value. Know your value and unlock your freedom. Mwah. Much love. Bye for now.